hey, it's time to get up. It's time to get ready. We have to let the chickens out because we got a birthday party coming to Sneed's farmhouse. <laughs> Welcome to my page. I'm the owner of Sneed's Farmhouse. I started all this <laughs> way back in 2019, and I'm still learning today as we go along. So, thanks for joining my page, and thanks for following along. Okay, so last night, Ruger and I had to have a come to Jesus talk. Let me tell you who Ruger is. Ruger came to me... I'm going to say probably two months ago. So, I received this phone call from this lady. And being a petting zoo and a rescue, I get phone calls every day to rescue animals. And let me tell you something. If I lived alone, I would probably rescue every animal. And I would probably work around the clock to pay for their feed. But the great thing about being married to Shane is we're a perfect balance. Shane kind of pulls the rein on me and goes, Judy, we can't rescue them all. And I'm over here going, why? Like, why can't we rescue them all? And I would probably run myself ragged, working myself to death to provide for these animals. But there's only one of me. So, the situation happened with Ruger is this family contacted me and said, I have this goat that mom has rejected the baby. It was just one of them. It's a buck. And um, she was a mom, and I believe she's a working mom, and she has like, and I might be wrong, she has like four kids under the age of five. So, she's a busy mom. She does not have time to bottle feed a baby goat. So, that's where I came into play. And she called me, and she was like, please, can you take this goat? And sometimes, Sometimes I just can't say no. Like sometimes, sometimes I say yes before I even ask Shane because I, I just go with my heart and my heart is to help. So I said yes. And so I went and met her and I got Ruger for the first time. Well, they had already spoiled rotten. Ruger was rotten before he even came to my farm. He was wearing pajamas. He was wearing his diapers. He lived in the house of this family. So, he, it didn't start with me. It started with them. They had, they had Ruger just rotten. So, then he came to me and he continued to be rotten. So, he continued to live in the house he continued to wear diapers, and Ruger started going with me into nursing homes, into schools, into libraries. Ruger went everywhere with me, and he was a type of goat. It was almost like he was a dog, like he didn't run off. Like, I could not put him on any kind of restrictions, like a halter or a... Um, a harness or anything like that, a leash. Like, he never ran off. He stayed with me everywhere I went. And he used to, like, in the mornings, I would say, come on, let's get on the golf cart. And he would jump on the golf cart, and he would go on rides with me in the morning. And it got to be to the point where he graduated from living in my house to living in the garage. Well, I just couldn't bring it upon myself to put him in a dog crate. I just couldn't do it. So, every morning, I would have to clean up after him. But it got to the point where him and my cat started sleeping together. And they became buddies. And it was the cutest thing. Like, I would, I would open the garage door in the morning, and him and the kitty cat would be all curled up together in the chair with blankets. It was the cutest thing. So, like, I continued to let that happen probably for a little too long. So, Ruru never really realized that he was a goat. So, it came a point in time where I, my husband was like, Judy, Ruger is not a dog. He is a goat. 
he has to live in the barn. <laughs> I was just, I wasn't okay with it. But I knew he was right. Like, I was cleaning up, you know, after him every single morning. And so, I was like, I know he's a goat. I know he's a goat. But at the time, it was winter, and I didn't want him to go outside. So, like I said, he probably stayed with us a little too long, and that's probably my fault. So, in the past six weeks, I guess it's been, I had to introduce Rutger to the barn. <laughs> it did not go well. Every single night, he would scream for me. It was awful. It was the most awful thing ever because I would be leaving, like I had put everyone to bed, and I'm like, Ruger, go to bed. <laughs> he would just scream, and I was like, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. My husband's like, Judy, you have got to leave Ruger out in the barn. I'm like, okay, okay, I know, I know. Well, it got to the point where Ruger kept wanting to go under the fence to the chicken area. And I just couldn't, like, I didn't want Ruger to be sad. So, I would let him go over to the chickens and not be with the goats during the day. But I would make him spend the night with the goats at night. And so, he kind of like became friends with the chickens. And fast forward, he still wants to be with the chickens. So, now I've created a big, huge problem. So, that's generated multiple conversations with Ruger. And it goes a little something like this. But before that, um, I, people ask me all the time about all my animals living together and why I have not separated and so forth. And I wanna explain. So, not being a farmer, I did not know that you were supposed to separate your animals. Like, I did not know that donkeys kill goats. I didn't know that. So, I just, as I began to get animals, I just began to put them all together and it worked. So, then when people would come tour my farms that were farmers or had other animals, they would say, does your donkey not kill your goats? And I was like, what does that mean? And they were like, donkeys kill goats. So I said, well, he really doesn't. And so then they would say, how do you free range your peacocks? And I said, I don't know what that means. And they were like, peacocks don't stay home. I'm like, well, mine go visit, but they come back home every single time. So people started saying these things to me and I was very confused because I wasn't a farmer. So I didn't really know what they mean, meant. So as people were saying this to me, I started going, why is my farm different? Like, what's different about my farm? Like, why are my animals getting along? So, I began to notice that there was something special going on in my farm. So, I sat back and I began to assess my farm and I began to watch all the animals. And I was watching them, even though they all make different sounds, they all were raised totally different. They're all different animals. They look different. Like everything's different about them. They all get along. So at that point is when I learned that when schools come to my farm, that's what I want to teach them because I was still learning about how to raise them myself. So I began to talk to the kids about how the animals do not discriminate against each other, but all live in harmony on my farm. So when they come here, I begin to tell them a story about getting an animal like, um, I kept getting, I got one and it got lonely, so I got two. And I did that with every single animal besides Leroy. And so I begin when kids come to my farm, I begin to tell them, and I don't just do this for kids, I do this for adults too. So, what I began to tell them is I began to read my children's book about how I couldn't just have one, I had to have two. But when Leroy's part comes and Leroy got lonely, I brought my grandson to play. So, I didn't get two donkeys. And a lot of people asked me, why didn't you get two donkeys? And that's when I began to teach them how my animals live in harmony on my farm. So, when I began to get Leroy... I began to notice that Leroy didn't notice that he was any different from anybody else on my farm. I noticed that he didn't look at boyfriend, the pig, the 400 pound pig that's short, Leroy's here. 
I began to notice that he was friends with the pig. And I began to notice that the 1,500 pound cow that's huge and a lot bigger than Leroy, Leroy didn't treat it any different. So I began to notice beautiful things were happening in my farm. And that's when I really began to take a, a look back and I teach kids and I teach adults that come to my farm is that the animals all get along. And I begin to show them how, even though they, they're all different, they all get along, which is what we should do as human beings. Even though we're raised different, someone can be a Democrat, someone can be a Republican. We can have different views, just like my animals do, but we can all get along and not discriminate against each other. And we can allow each other to talk differently, to have different opinions, to look different, to sound different, to be raised different. But what we look at, when we look out into my farm, what we see is this beautiful picture of everyone getting along. But often people say, okay, well the animals all live together in the farm. How do you feed them? Like, how do you do that? So it goes a little something like this. So it's nighttime, almost nighttime. And they're all standing here waiting on me as if they miss me so much. It has nothing to do with me. It's because I have all this feed sitting here. <laughs> See, what, what happens is they really use me. I mean, they do, they use me. You think they absolutely love me, you ready for this? <laughs> Why are you? <laughs> Why are you in the air? Why did the sheep go into the water trough? <laughs> anyway, it's probably wonder. You're probably wondering. Like I have all these animals that live together, and most people keep their animals separated, right? So how do I feed them? Well, I'll show you. First up is the goats. So the first thing I have to do is put the goats in the barn because if I don't, they're raging lunatics. <laughs> and when I walk in there with this bucket, they forget every single manner that I've ever taught them the entire time they have lived here. It's like everything just goes out the door because I have a bucket in my hand. And I have tried really hard to teach them the, the thing that I say to them to get them in the barn. I said, go get in the bed. I tell them to go get the bed and they run in the barn. Well, they won't run in the barn if I say that without this in my hand. But if I tell them to go get in the bed and there's a bucket in my hand, they'll do exactly what I say. So as you see, the goats went straight to bed. So next up is the sheep. I have to throw this bucket over there and put the sheep to bed. Ship, 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 ship. Shoop, 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 shoop. Come on. Come on. Shoop, shoop, shoop. Shoop, 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 shoop. Yes, it sounds ridiculous that I have to go shoop, shoop, shoop. But the lady that had the sheep before me, that's how she called them. She used that tone of voice. She'd say shoop, shoop, shoop. I was out there with her. So I begin to mock her and they do exactly what I say. Okay, next up, this is a little trick that I do. So what I do is the pigs follow me with the feed and they think that they're next, but they're not next. The alpacas are next. So what I have to do is I have to walk past the gate so the pigs follow me and then I open the gate and the alpacas go in to eat. So it goes a little something like this. Okay, here's the pig. Walking towards the alpaca pen. Because you're over there. So, see the pigs are following me. I'm slowly approaching the gate. I open the gate. I walk past the gate. I gotta get Leroy. Leroy! Gate. Come here, Leroy. I open the gate. I just automatically go in. Quit, Leroy. <laughs> so 
I slowly open the gate. Sorry, Leroy interrupted me. And the alpacas normally go straight in. But as you see, they're giving me a little bit of trouble. <sighs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go in, girl. Come on. There we go. Go on in. All right. So see, the pigs thought they were next. And as you can see, they're not. <laughs> so now I have the alpacas in. I have the sheep in, but I haven't fed them yet. I put them in the barn. So the next up is to trick Leroy and make him think he's next. So what I do is I begin to walk towards this gate and I keep my bucket out this way. So Leroy follows the bucket. And as you see, the pigs are going in there because they know that they're getting fed over there. And Leroy is over here trying to get the bucket. As you see, they're standing there waiting on me. They're the only ones that mind. They don't try, they sit and wait. Next up is this man right here. And he's gonna follow me to this gate right here. And then I'm going to open the gate. He goes in and I pour his feed in this bucket. And then he eats. So now you see, goats have been fed, they're in the pen. Sheep are still waiting on their feed, but I've got them behind the fence. Leroy is in the barn eating, and the alpacas are saying, where is my feed? And the pigs are over there waiting for their feed, and the cows are waiting on theirs. And the cows Wait, taste or stop. Mama here. <laughs> and I just spread it out. <laughs> so that's how I put everyone to bed and feed them every morning. But listen, the grand finale is this over here. Are, are y'all waiting for this? Wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> Me and him are having a, a nice mother-son talk tonight about how he is not a chicken, but a goat. He wants to hang out with the chickens. And I keep trying to tell him that he is a goat and he is not catching on. So, it's gonna conversation that I'm having with him is going a little something like this. Ruger, now listen to me. I want you to sit and I want you to listen to everything that I have to say before you speak. Okay? Okay. You are a goat. Don't you even look away from me. Look at me. You are a goat. You are not a chicken. No, you're not. You're not a chicken. I, I know it's hard to believe that you're not a chicken. Ruger, you are not <laughs> a chicken. You are a goat. Look at me. You are a goat. You have Ruger. Ruger. <laughs> Rogie, I want you to look at me. Ruger. Sneed, you are a goat. You have to spend the night with the goats. You cannot spend the night with the chickens and the kitty cat, okay? I do not think he's listening to me. I don't know if I need to hire a therapist or what I need to do, but it is not registering in Ruger's mind that he is a goat. Ruger was bottle fed and he lived in the garage with the kitty cat for a long, long, long time. And I am trying to break the news to him that he's a goat, but he will not listen. Now he's trying to, he's trying to suck up. I, I know what you're doing. I know why you're in my lap. <laughs> Don't try to fool me, Rugie. I know you're trying to pull one over on your mommy. I know.
You can't get past me, Rogie Rogue, but I'm gonna give you a kiss. <laughs> Roger, you're a goat, baby. I promise. You don't even look, you don't even have feet that look like chickens, Roger. You gotta go night night in the barn with the goats. It's just not working. I'm gonna try this. Or try a little hypnotism. Ruger, listen to me. Let's sing a song. I am a goat. I live in the barn. I am a goat. And I live in the barn. I'm not a chicken. No, sir. I am not a chicken. But I'm a goat. I'm a goat. And I live in the barn. I'm a goat. I'm a goat. And I live in the barn. I don't think he's falling for it either. I'm trying so hard. But I'm not going to bed until I get a smoochy kiss from Tatum River. Give me a kiss. Thank you. So, it's obviously the next day. And you see that my talk did well. My hypnotist, my hypnotism, it did well. Not Ruger is going to be Ruger. And I can't decide if I should just accept the fact that Ruger is always going to want to be a chicken or if I should continue the discipline and see if I can get through to his thick head. But first, here's some pictures of Ruger when he was younger. <laughs> see I can't understand for the life of me why Ruger is the way he is <laughs> can you figure it out 